today I'm going to spend all day in a car so I thought it would be a good idea to make an update of what we already developed on the H-Tube and what's still ahead. I will go through all the individual parts and talk a little bit more in detail so this video is going to be all talking. It's middle of June now and I want to have all the 121 tubes what needs to be manufactured for the panel i want to have them manufactured at the end of september because in october we have to uh, install the tubes so this means that we have half of the june then july and august for development and in september i would like to start with the manufacture uh, we need 121 tubes so i want to make something like 100 and maybe 40 50 to be sure that if something goes wrong we have a tube that needs to be rejected we can immediately replace it uh, so the september will be spent with the manufacture and then october with the installation uh, that's not much uh, it's really it's really tight schedule and uh, i need to be planning carefully now so to make sure that we we make it on time uh, the first part I started the video with was the glass work. The H-tube is 150 millimeters in diameter. It's several times bigger than the 50 millimeter tube. So uh, all the torches and uh, like the burners and oxygen stuff needs to be upgraded for this new for this new tube. Sealing of the front window into the envelope is one of the most difficult things so I wanted to start with this part and this works well the graphite holder holds the window perfectly i will maybe need to do some fine tunings but it generally works and it's ready for the production another part is the burners uh, i have a carriage burner for the for the lathe the remaining things on this are valves i will need to fit some valves to control the oxygen and gas flow but this should be easy what we need to do is to upgrade our oxygen source we don't have enough oxygen for this large burner we use oxygen concentrators for production of the oxygen for the for the burners uh, i don't want to have a liquid oxygen in the workshop because it's a high pressure cylinder and uh, it's really it's really risky the person who installs the the regulation valves needs to take extra care with with oxygen and uh, if they do something wrong it can it can explode or you know burn away so I don't really want to take this risk so instead of having uh, high pressure cylinders with oxygen in the workshop I will rather go the way of having more oxygen concentrators so the problem with oxygen concentrators we use two normally and uh, this works uh, the problem is that sometimes one of them stops and it's always when you need it least uh, when you are at the middle of the work and then it makes problems so uh, the, the oxygen concentrators are medical devices so they have a lot of safety elements inbuilt you know, and if something is not within the expected range they stops so we decided that we will reverse engineer the concentrators and we will take several units like four or five or six units and we will strip them to bare minimum like we will just take the cylinders with the molecular sieve some valves and uh, we will control it from from Arduino and uh, without any like sensing of the concentration or anything like this we have a oxygen concentration sensor like a handheld unit which we will test we will use it for testing all the individual parts so that we know that uh, the unit produces enough oxygen but then once you use this station for for the work uh, there will be no worries that it will stop at the middle of the work. Uh, Lukash spent quite a lot of time uh, disassembling and understanding how the oxygen concentrators works. So the plan is to build a frame. Uh, there will be six units, like six concentrators disassembled. And uh, on the bottom there will be six compressors. Uh, each of the compressor delivers enough air for one set we have two concentrators they deliver 10 liters per minute and this is not enough for the carriage burner so 
the new unit should deliver 30 liters per minute and this should, this should be enough okay as for the envelope itself uh, we have a supplier we cooperate with a glass blowing studio uh, which makes the envelope of the regular tubes for us and uh, this same company will do the envelope for us so uh, this is soft another part is the stem uh, this is the part which is already developed and one of the few which is already ready for production of the H tube. Another part what was discussed a lot in the comments was the residual stress which will remain in the glass after sealing of the front window and uh, the proper technique would be to take the part, take the old glass and put it into oven for annealing. Uh, this annealing removes all the stress from the glass and then it's safe to, to handle it and without risk of the glass cracking by the, by the stress inside. But uh, the problem is that by the time when I'm doing the seal uh, on the front window I will have already the internal system installed in the tube. So the problem is that if I want to do the annealing I would need to take the whole tube with the internal system inside and put it into into oven and the annealing is done at 560 degrees of Celsius and the internal system would not first it would oxidize if you do it as it is because there is air inside of the tube so the oxygen from air would react with the stainless steel and um, I cannot do this some of you suggested to use inert gas as a filling for the tube before placing into the oven but uh, this would not work there is still a lot of water and other gases trapped on the internal layer of the glass and on the parts itself and when you heat it up they will be released and they will attack the parts inside so this is not a solution so to, to prevent this I would need to do a bake out and any it during the bake out and this is really uh, really complicated so so the plan for now is to remove the stress during the sealing. Uh, I will first do the seal and then I will flame any in it. I will run, I will let the part spin in a flame while allowing it to, to cool gradually. So this should remove, this will not for sure remove all the stress uh, and the result will not be the same as in the case when you put the part into oven for proper editing anything but uh, it will remove the stress or it will decrease the stress under the level it can crack I believe that it will it will work there are a lot of vacuum devices like uh, vacuum floors and displays and other things with uh, shapes that are difficult to seal by flame so these are in the production these are sealed with a solder glass it's a uh, it's a paste that you apply on the glass you put the parts together like you put two solid pieces of glass together and you use this solder glass as, as a glue you put it into the oven and fuse these parts together but this temperature is not enough for the solid pieces of the glass uh, to to melt so the only part which melts is the solder glass so this is another option what we could theoretically use uh, I did a quick test, I ordered a solder glass from Schott, uh, this is a company in Germany, they produce special glasses, uh, so I ordered a sample, it's very expensive, it actually cost 250 euros for a small bottle of solder glass, but uh, if we use this in production, it would, the price would not be so high. Uh, but I don't think we we will use this. It's a uh, first thing. It's very ugly. It's when you do the seal It's it's really it's like you have transparent parts of the glass like all the glass is nice transparent and then you have a you have a seal which is like a gray or or yellow or some other part so it's not really nice uh, way how to seal the glass together uh, but if it works and if it is the only way I'm sure we would find a way how to make it at least uniform and, and nice uh, there are other problems with the solder glass which are more serious uh, the solder glass which is suitable for our type of glass of the main body glass melts around 350 degrees of Celsius and uh, the bake out 
temperature during the vacuum process is 500 degrees so uh, at this temperature it would be already molten and I'm afraid that it would be sucked into the into the tube the option is to decrease the bake-out temperature if you decrease the bake-out temperature then the solder glass might be still firm enough to keep the tube together without letting the air going through the seal by the pressure of the atmosphere but this is something I want to avoid because the general recommendation for the bake-out temperature is to keep it as high as the parts of the tube allows you either uh, the melt melting temperature of the glass or some other critical temperatures for the parts inside the higher the temperature the more impurities are released from the glass and from the parts and you can evacuate them so after the bake out and the vacuum process the, the tube is cleaner if you use higher temperature and the cleanliness of the gas inside is the most critical factor what determines the uh, the lifespan of the tube so I don't want to compromise on this, I want to do the proper bake out and uh, I don't want to decrease the temperature because it would be easier to do the seal. So I want to find a uh, manufacturing technique which is which will allow us to do the proper bake out. Okay, another thing regarding sealing of the front window, uh, this will be done at high temperature, it's like 1000 degrees on the edge of the seal and uh, when we are doing this seal the tube is at regular atmosphere so there is oxygen inside and at this temperature the parts would heat up and they would oxidize during this process so so to prevent damage on the parts because of the heat and the oxygen around I need to purge the tube with nitrogen and uh, for this I will need another i have one swivel which is used for the light chuck to, to blow air into it or to, to pass the inert gas through it so i have one and this one will be used for the vacuum on one side holding the front window and on the other side i will have another swivel which will purge the nitrogen into it so i need to build this swivel it's my, my glass lathe is from 1968 and it's really i tried to find this swivel on ebay or something but it's not no longer manufactured and nobody offers it so it would be very hard to get the original one so i will need to build a swivel myself so i did some construction infusion and I think I'm able to do it with 3d printed parts a few ball bearings and some some other parts so this will be another thing the the nitrogen there will be a lot of nitrogen consumed by this process so I already had to buy a large cylinder uh, with nitrogen and this is already installed and uh, all the system around was cleaned the hoses were organized and and uh, and this uh, to make this sealing operation consistent with repeatable results uh, we have to have always the same level of nitrogen flowing through the tube so uh, for this reason i will have to install another flow meter the flow meter will tell us the the volume of the nitrogen flowing through the tube So we are at the first stop of our today's journey. We are doing some reconstruction works on our family's wine cellar and during the reconstruction I found these two old boxes. They are made of wood and they are attacked by the woodworm. So I'm taking them to the place when they can treat them properly to kill the woodworm in the wood and preserve it for the future generations. They are actually pretty old. This one is from 1868 as you can see here and the other one here 1859. We can see the names here Johann Burian, this one Franz Pavoni 1868.
I'm afraid that these winemaking things may become my next hobby. It's really, really exciting. Back to the Nixie tubes, the next thing in development of the H-tube is reliable connection between the digits and the stem. This connection needs to be electrically conductive, but uh, electrically insulated so that there is no discharge around this wire. Uh, we need to have the glow only at the digits and if this wire is not insulated, it will glow as well and this is what we don't want. We want only the digits to be glowing. I did several tests already. I also tried to come up with application of ceramic coating on the wire myself but uh, it all turned out to be very laborious and uh, difficult to uh, make the layer of the adhesive really adhere well to the to the wire so uh, right now i think the best way would be to find some ready-made solution for us uh, it's not easy because uh, we have really high demands on the wire it needs to withstand 500 degrees of celsius under high vacuum without evaporation and uh, this is not easy to uh, to meet so um, right now i'm trying to source two different wires one of them is called cerama wire and the other one uh, is just like glass coated wire uh, the first one was suggested by ben krasnov uh, ben runs really exciting channel uh, on YouTube it's called Applied Science I'm sure you know it but if you don't check it out uh, the thermal wire is a nickel wire coated with a thin layer of something like glass and this is additionally coated with ceramic layer uh, this wire is designed for use in high temperatures and uh, it's really well insulated uh, so this wire could be used uh, definitely so I'm now trying to to get a small quantity to, for the tests uh, the problem is that the lead time is eight weeks so I ordered one pound of this wire it's like 1000 meters sample uh, the price of this wire is uh, 2000 US dollars for one pound one pound is 1000 meters we will get to two dollars per tube which is good uh, I had another idea to use uh, filaments coated with alumina because this is existing technology and there is one company in United States which makes these wires uh, but they are really expensive it would cost around 60 or 70 dollars uh, to make 10 filaments for one tube so it would be like 70 dollars per tube this is really expensive and we would not be able to uh, to make it for good price the tube with this uh, so the thermal wire looks like good, good option for for us um, another option uh, this was suggested by Richard Anderson under the previous video and uh, this is a glass coated wire manufactured by a company called Photonis uh, we got in contact and uh, it seems that this wire is no longer manufactured uh, but they still have some some samples of, and uh, this quantity should be enough for us so uh, this is a tungsten wire coated with a glass uh, the bending radius is around half inch so pretty good for us uh, it, it would be easy to, to to bend it inside our tube and uh, again because it's glass it would be uh, well insulated against the corona or the gas discharge so they just I just got email from them mentioning that they uh, they have this in stock and they have enough quantity for us so uh, I will when I get to the gas station I will reply uh, asking for price because I don't know the price but uh, what is good they have it already manufactured so it can be shipped immediately and uh, in case the Cerama wire will come really after eight weeks uh, in case they will not make it uh, let's say in one month we will have to use something different because there will not be enough time for the production and uh, in this case it would be great to have the glass coated wire so I will try to buy enough quantity for a whole project and uh, later when we will get this 
dupe into production for other customers. Uh, we will use the thermal wire which will be uh, available and uh, which will also work well in this in this scenario. So I think the connection wires problem is solved. I still don't have any of them, but one of these two options will will work for sure. So another part what is not yet developed is the anode cup. Uh, this is the part which is under the digits, the which, you know which surrounds them and which is under them supports all the internal structure. And um, I want to keep the shape of this part the traditional way like it was made in the old 70s Nixies and uh, this means that we will need to do it on a press by press forming. My idea is to like if you want to do the stamping or forming of the metal it's very expensive to make the tooling. The operation itself is low cost uh, so the production if you have large quantity of the parts it's very uh, efficient to make them for low cost but the tooling the initial tooling cost is very high so I want to make a simple tool um, and uh, we will first laser cut the parts from a flat sheet metal and then form them on this simple tool this should bring our costs low enough so we are able to afford this tooling and this shape of the part um, I want to use this case to get more into pressing and stamping and this type of manufacturing technique because it was always used in production in vacuum tubes. Uh, as I mentioned on my website and maybe in one of the previous videos, uh, I'm on the background slowly developing a small or smaller Nixie tube, 40 millimeters diameter, roughly 50 millimeters tall digits. So the digits will be roughly the same as our current Nixie tube, but the overall body will be smaller. And the main intention for making this tube is to uh, bring the costs lower, like our costs lower, so we can have also the final, the, the, the price for the customer much lower than our current Nixie tube. I don't know if it will work, but I want to, I want to try. And if I want to bring the cost really down, I need to use stamping for the metal parts because they are much less expensive than the etching what we use right now. So I want to use this tube, the H tube, as a case where we can learn a little bit from the stamping and pressing and uh, possibly uh, use this knowledge later. Maybe we will manufacture the parts ourselves. To learn more about these techniques, uh, I ordered several old books and uh, I'm getting through them right now. And from the simple calculations, I found that a small press, like five or 10 ton press, uh, would be enough for making all the parts from the thin metal sheets would be used like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters. So uh, it's not so unrealistic to be stamping the parts ourselves one day. And I would be really, I, I, for some reason, I really like this technique. I, I like the way how it, how it is manufactured. So uh, I'm trying to learn more about, about this process and uh, possibly use the forming of the metal for the H tube. So um, as for the material for the anode cup, I'm planning to use a regular steel, not stainless steel. We use stainless steel for all the parts in our regular Nixie tube. Uh, it's very easy to store them, to clean them. It looks good. Uh, they don't rust when storing them. So for this reason, stainless steel is very good. But in this case, I want to try a regular steel because I want to uh, make a blackening on it. Once the anode cup part is formed from the metal, uh, we need to coat it with some layer of black something because uh, if you leave it just as it is, it would reflect the light emitted from the glowing cathodes and this would make it really difficult to read. So uh, we need to introduce some uh, black contrastive layer on the on the on this part below the <clears throat> below the digits. We can use the same black coating what we use for our regular Nixie tubes because we don't have the possibility to do the same treatment because the part for the H tube is much bigger. So I will explain this later uh, what we use and and how we use it. Another thing are the ceramic parts what we will use inside the tube. Uh, 
uh, there are several parts uh, like in our regular tube uh, we have the ceramic insulating rings between the digits we have a ceramic rod in the middle of these rings uh, which is used for threading the digits on it. Uh, it it holds the whole stack together and the last ceramic part are two ceramic tubes uh, which are glued on the stem and uh, they they hold they, they provide support for the stem during the sealing and make the internal structure more rigid. As a material for these ceramic parts, we will use alumina, which is pure aluminum oxide. Uh, it proven to be really really good material for our use. It's uh, resistant to high temperatures. It's pure, so it, it doesn't outgas any impurities, any gases to the vacuum. It's dense enough, so. Uh, it doesn't contain any trapped gases, so it's really good material. The ceramic rings and the ceramic rods are ordered from our current supplier. We had to pay for the molds, so they manufacture the molds. It costs around two or three hundred dollars for a mold. So if you need another part, it costs like two or three hundred dollars, and then you pay a few cents for each of the parts. So. These parts are, are already on the way to us. We should receive them next week. Uh, once we have these parts, I want to make the internal structure prototype, like first crude prototype of the internal structure and make one tube uh, already sealed to the glass so that we have like one tube working. It will be really ugly, but because we will not have the metal parts yet, but uh, it, will, it will work and it will give us a uh, better idea about difficulties in the process that we don't know yet. Tak, já to vezmu. So the boxes are prepared for treatment. I wanted to make some pictures there, but uh, the lady wasn't very like in a mood or she didn't have her best day. <clears throat> so uh, let's go. And I will tell you more about this place. So it's a castle close to Prague and they have a special equipment here for treating the wood with wood worms. It's a chamber like three times three times three meters and they fill this chamber with the wooden items and then let it be radiated by gamma rays. Uh, this kills the worms including the worms which are deep in the wood but it doesn't change the structure of the wood it doesn't change the colors anything so uh, I wanted to take some pictures and show you more about uh, the lady who works there wasn't really in a mood so I will take more pictures from the other side of this of this castle 